This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. Welcome to episode three of my Oakley Review series. Um, today I'm going over the Over the Top. This was one of the pairs that was requested quite a, by quite a few people, so it actually came up because I was going through my list of Oakleys that I bought chronologically. And I thought this actually came later, but turns out that, you know, if you subtract the square pairs that I've lost over the years or sold or whatever, uh, this one actually came up next. Um, the other thing that kind of fills in the gap is the Square Wire 2.0 Spring Hinge Silver Fire. I like that pair. I'm not real crazy about spring hinges. The fire lenses kind of were scratched. They're a little bit, you know, they don't stay clean too long. So those ended up going to a friend, and uh, my brother got me these guys for Christmas. These guys retailed for about 180. They are probably one of the most radical designs that Oakley's ever created, mainly because they don't go around your head; they go over the top, as they're called. Usually they're abbreviated to OTT, just you know for ease of typing and such. And I got these in 2003. No, 2002, Christmas 2002. And, you know, I, I saw them on the website. They were just really awesome looking. I figured, you know, these things are just way out there. I have to have them. Um, a couple of my holy grails at the time were, were this pair, the Mars in leather, and then the 24K X-Metal uh, 20. Uh, probably my next pair is actually going to be the X-Metal 20, so that should be coming up next time. Um, you know, these things are just crazy. They go right over your head. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all deal. So you put them right over your head, and then they just clamp onto your head, and they stay there. Uh, they do kind of, you know, they, they fit snug enough. Uh, I'm sure if you shook your head enough, they'd fall off, but, you know, any most pairs of sunglasses probably would. Uh, as far as fit goes, uh, like I said, it's a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. And if you have a large head, a small head, it tries to bend. All the flex is going to come right in this frame here. And, you know, it tries to follow the contour of your head fairly well. But, you know, if you have a different size head, it's kind of, you know, you're kind of at the whim of whether it's going to stretch and fit or not. Um, you know, as far as comfort goes, they're not really too bad. Uh, the main thing that happens is right down here, you're going to notice some sort of dimples or indentations over time if you wear them for a while. They've tried to mitigate that by having some sort of pads here. So right behind the main orbitals, there's some sort of padding there that actually goes into the O matter. And that applies a little bit, or it takes a little bit of pressure off your temples and your forehead there. I don't really find it does all that much, though. So you're really kind of uh, having just plastic against your head and, you know, the, the fit's kind of, it's a little bit dodgy. But, you know, you're really going to get in this for style. I know a lot of people actually taking these snowboarding and, you know, they said it worked pretty well. But, uh, I don't know. I haven't snowboarded in my life, so <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the guy modeling this is my shadow head. Really cool piece. I got this from a friend. I traded some stuff for it. Uh, this thing is made out of ceramic, so if it falls, it shatters into a million pieces and there's no way to repair it. So... I really got to be careful with this guy, but this guy actually has my Medusa and my over the top. I have it upstairs in a box. I just kind of have the Medusa on top of the over the top. Looks pretty cool. But yeah, I love this guy. Makes a nice display model. So uh, over the tops came out in 2000 and I got this pair 2002, 2000, 2003. They originally came in most, uh, most of them came in full metal jacket or FMJ models. So they're basically silver with a certain type of lens. Uh, I believe the colorways came in black iridium, emerald iridium, ice, and fire. I think, believe were the four. Uh, this guy is matte black with ruby. I believe it was just kind of listed as flat black because um, I think matte black is actually a little bit more like a sandblasted, has kind of a sandblasted look to it. This is more just a real smooth black, but not so smooth it's polished. The ruby lenses... Uh, they're not really as pronounced as most of like the Juliet's or some of the Fates or things like that that had the early 2000s ruby. Around the time, the ruby at that time was really bright, really red, and that led to kind of a, as I call it, the Great Ruby Wars, where everyone was freaking out about how red the ruby Juliet's were. I'll get into that at some point. Uh, my brother actually has the three uh, X-Metal ruby pairs. Hopefully I'll get them over at some point, and he can take a look at that. 
Um, but yeah, it's the main thing is these lenses are a lot bigger than most of the uh, Ruby lenses that were out at the time, so there's a lot more curvature to it. And like all iridium lenses, the more curve there is to it, the more uh, shades or hue changes you're going to have in the lens. So it may be right, bright red in the front, but it'll kind of turn to orange, turn slightly to yellow. I've even seen some Ruby lenses that actually turn to like a shade of green. I have a pair of um, Ruby New Zeros in the Ducati shape. Um, there's a couple pairs out there. I managed to snag one. Those things curve all the way around your side. I mean, I, I can even see some, like, it goes right back to blue again. It goes to the whole spectrum of the rainbow. So, um, as far as Ruby goes, you can, you can tell they're Ruby because from the back, you kind of get that blue tint. And I don't think it's a blue uh, tint to the base. I think it's just the, the red actually blocks so much light. The only thing left getting through are sort of the cooler shades. So, when you put it on, everything kind of gets a blue tint, like most uh, Ruby frames or Ruby lenses do. And the real claim to fame for the over the top is uh, Blade 2. If you take a look at Blade 2, when Blade starts fighting the vampire assassins uh, behind that big wall of lights, at the very end of the fight, you'll see him actually take that off. And they've kind of, kind of retrofitted it with night vision goggles. So the, uh, they use the frame, but they have like these really cool, bright, glowing red lights that let them see in the dark. Or probably in their case, actually blocks them the light because vampires, I guess, don't like light that much. Um, uh, but basically, that's kind of where the, the these really became popular. There is a Blade 2 model, which has some etching down here at the bottom, which just says Blade 2. There's also a pair of 4s in just black black iridium that also have the etching, too. Um, they have the same skew. It's the same color. It's the same ruby lenses. Everything's the same. There's just some etching there. So there's really no difference between this model and the Blade uh, 2 model. But this is kind of a special pair. I don't remember it coming out uh, you know, too much after that. I think they, they sold it online. That's where I got it. I kind of had a little bit of nostalgia lately because I was looking through some old uh, Oakley.com orders and I, I saw the one where I ordered this and there was a time where I could just go into Oakley.com and order a, a, a black ruby over the top and you kind of miss those days when you could just order things like this so easily. But it's all right. I have seen over the tops in some of the vaults lately and I, I picked up a pair for my brother the other uh, last time I was there. Or not last time I was there, but last time I uh, saw one there. And he ended up picking one up in New York. So he ended up with two pairs of over the tops that year. And I'm going to bring those out just now. So I'd like to go over the generations of over the tops because there are two generations. There's um, one which had the padding and then there's one without it. So I'll kind of show you those um, differences. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring out those models right now. Uh, where are they? Ah, Shazam! That's one. Shazam! And there's the other. All right, so these are the two over-the-tops. Uh, they are both in Full Metal Jacket or FMJ Plus models. There are two FMJs. There's the FMJ Plus and the FMJ 5.56. There's a lot of FMJ um, coatings out there. They all kind of basically uh, come down to the same thing, where pairs are put in an oven, and then these little shards of metal are clamped on around it. A volt of electricity is uh, brought through the whole chassis where the metal is clamped on, and then it vaporizes. Whatever the metal vaporized uh, dust or whatever it is settles on the frames, that ends up coating evenly in a metal or a full metal jacket, basically. Um, all full metal jacket ends up as the, as the same color, and then they add special uh, coatings and treatments to it to get the different frames. So that's why you have like FMJW for white, the 5.56, which is a little more silver, the FMJ Plus, which is a little more dull almost like a gray. That was actually the same um, FMJ that was on my splice, which I went over earlier. Um, there's also FMJ Copper, which you'll see on my top coats coming up. Um, FMJ, I know there's like an electric muster, which is technically an FMJ too. So there's a lot of different variations of that. But these are basically just the, uh, the FMJ Plus model with black and fire lenses. So I'll just open these up quickly. Actually, Shazam! That was convenient. Okay, so what I have here is a first generation over the top. Let me just get this guy out of the way quickly. I should have just teleported him too. There. This is the first generation and this is a second generation. A couple things you can look at to determine the difference. The first is uh, the bag that holds it has a stitched oval icon. The second generation, there's no markings and it just has sort of a tag here down at the bottom. You can kind of feel the difference in the fabric too. 
And the ironic thing is that the, uh, the fabric on this is sort of a tighter weave, which is indicative of a lot of the microfibers in the early 2000s. Or is this one's a little bit coarser? Um, now, I believe the coarser one did exist probably in the late 90s as well, but right around 2004 or so, they kind of moved to a different fabric. And the microfibers, they get a little bit coarser. They didn't clean as well. I don't really like them as much. Also, the button-down 2.0 shirt, which used the same fabric, that changed as well. Uh, the original shirt was a really nice piece. Uh, you know, if you started to sweat a little bit in it, it kind of whisked it right away. It was really nice, but then they changed it to the new one, and I don't really like them as much. So let me just take these off quickly. These are uh, the, my brother's pairs that I was just talking about, but he's out of town right now, so I'm going to commandeer them and do a quick review. The bag, you know, there's no point covering the entire thing. So what it does is it basically just covers the lens portion. There's an elastic band that goes around the top and it basically just goes over it and then makes, has sort of a snug fit. All right, so we have black iridium and fire iridium. So I'll just turn these around quickly. And you notice that on the first generation, it's just flush here. There's no padding at all. It came with these stickies here. And what you're supposed to do is just peel off the backing, put the sticky here, and then that would give you a little bit of um, space between your forehead and the, and the O-matter. Um, that really didn't work too well because anytime you're trying to peel something off and put a flat sticker on a curved surface, it's not going to work. It's just going to come off. It's going to get kind of gross after a while. The second one has the pads on it. So instead of having a flush frame, there's an indentation and then a pad is put inside of that. So that um, allows you to have you know, a little bit extra padding. Um, it comes out a, probably about the same distance as the pads that you'd adhere to this, but it covers more of a surface. So it kind of covers, you know, a lot more of your forehead. Um, so a couple other differences. If you take a look at the indentations here, all they are are just indentations. It's sort of a mold that goes in just slightly. And if you look at the back, nothing comes through the other side. However, on the generation two, you will see that they drilled holes throughout the edges here. So you can pretty much look right through those holes and they go right through to the other side. Okay. All right, so really that's kind of the only difference between the two. Uh, there's really no detailing on the front uh, except for those indentations and then that slight polishing. It looks like what they did is they basically added the pads to the second generation and then tightened up some of the cosmetic things. Uh, my friend was nice enough to get me some footage. He has a prototype of this that's made out of resin as opposed to O-matter. And he uh, got me some footage of that just uh, rotating around. You can kind of notice that it's a little more collapsed because it's, you know, it's just a model. Um, so that's really it. Generation 1, Generation 2, and the matte black ruby over the top. Really cool pairs. I highly recommend that if you have the chance, pick up one of these. Functionally, not so much. Uh, sometimes I used to put them over my head and then like weave my hair out the side so it kind of looked like it was just coming like right out of my, my forehead. So I highly recommend getting these. If you're a collector, they are a must-have. And, uh, you know, really not much else to say except, you know, this is really where Oakley was at at the early 2000s. They were thinking out of the box. They were getting different ideas. They really had radical designs like the Splice, the Over the Top, uh, Medusa, all sorts of crazy things. So I'd like to end this. Um, I'll answer the trivia question from last week. What is the name of the frog that was used to advertise the original 80s frog skin? The answer is Jupiter. Um, it was a model that came out recently, the Jupiter, after the frog skin came back as the collector's edition. The Jupiter is released as sort of a restyling of that and kind of taken into the modern age. So they, what they did is they took the old pet name and then recycled that. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. I will leave you with a second question. And this is a question that I answered in order to get a Ducati Juliet serial number 11, which is kind of cool. Uh, you're only allowed to answer one question and get one prize, and this is the one I went for, but I figured no one else would probably know it. So the question was, what were the original three M-frame lens names when the Mumbo came out in 1989? That's it. Thank you for uh, looking at this, taking time to take a look at the generations of the over the top. I know this is a requested piece, so I'm glad that I was able to do it fairly early. I will see you next Sunday when I do the 24 karat gold X-Metal 20. Thank you and take care.